Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicGlasses.com. I know I've been throwing a lot of super capacitor flashlight videos at you lately, but today I'm going to show you how to assemble your own using a kit that I've designed. Uh, right now, it's charging through a 5 millimeter jack, and uh, it's at 9 volts at 1 amp. That's what the transformer is rated for. When it's done charging, that LED will turn on, the internal relay will turn off, and will completely detach the rest of the circuit tree from the charged supercapacitors. So there's no back powering from the supercapacitors to the internal circuitry. And so it'll stay charged. Internally, there's a uh, uh, 200 farad 5.4 volt bank of supercapacitors. There is a uh, large LED bank that I've used in the top here, which we'll get, we'll get to. There's a voltage booster, and there's my kit. So, let's check out the kit. I'll be selling the kit in many different variations, but the, the main DIY portion of the kit is the circuit board and the components. This is for uh, people who like to solder and put things together from scratch. Uh, let's just go over everything here. We get your custom printed circuit board, a 3-pin terminal block, two 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, two power diodes, a 78L05 5 volt regulator, a 2N2222 uh, P or NPN transistor, a 5 millimeter female jack, three 10 K ohm resistors, a single 470 ohm resistor, a 5 volt relay, a, uh, a ceramic 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor, green LED, 8 pin dip socket, 8 pin PIC 10F222 microchip, and last but not least, an 18 ohm 5 watt resistor. So let's go ahead and put in our resistors. R1 is labeled 18 ohm 5 watt and that is here. Now when you place this you want to make sure that it's not flushed down the board. In fact you want to have the leads as long as possible. You want to have it standing at least two centimeters above the board because this is your current limiter. It's going to get hot and that's what we're talking to talk about a little bit later. It's, uh, it's going to get hot because there's going to be more than 500, or 500 milliamps across it when it's charging the capacitors. When not charging, it won't be hot. But this is something we want to do. When you, when you place in the board, make sure it's at least 2 centimeters above the board. R5, R3, and R4 are all 10K ohm resistors right here. And R2 right here is your 470 ohm resistor. That's used to limit current to the LED flasher. So since these aren't um, polarized, they can go in either way. Solder them into place, and it will do the capacitors. You'll notice that the resistor is well above the board. You might actually consider doing that later on, if you, if you want. It makes things a little bit easier. I shouldn't have done it. I just wanted to do all the resistors at once. Anyway, C1 right here and C3 are both labeled uh, 10U, which is 10 micro. And these are both 10 micro, the electrolytic capacitors, which means they're polar, polarized. They've got a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is positive, the short lead is negative. So if you look very closely on the footprints, there is a plus symbol on both of them. In this case, it's in the lower right. In this case, it's in the upper left. You have to look very closely, but it's there. Make sure you place the long lead in the side with the plus symbol and the short lead in the opposite side. For the uh, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, um, which goes in our C2 slot right here, labeled 0 0.1, uh, it's ceramic, it's not polarized, it can go in either way, you don't have to worry about it. Toss it in, solder it into place. I'd like to add, make sure that your solder connections are, are excellent and there's no shorts, especially on this resistor. You want to make sure you have good solid solder connections. Lastly, we've got our... Uh, two diodes. Now on the diode there is a black side and then there is on the there is one side with a white ring around it. The white ring around it indicates the cathode or the negative side. The black side is your positive. D1 and D2 uh, the footprints have a white sim have a white stripe on one side and that is to indicate your negative side. Match up the white stripe on the footprint to the white side with a white stripe on the diode. If you don't do that, your circuit is not going to function at all. So solder those all into place, 
and next we will do our LED and our transistor and our regulator. The transistor and the regulator both look essentially the same. However, there is writing on it. This one is the 78L05, which you can read when you purchase the kit, and the other is a 2N2222. And they go into slots IC1, 78L05, and uh, T1. Now that's where your 2N2222 goes. Now it's labeled 2N3565, which is a mistake that I made. Uh, I'll be shipping in 2N2222 NPN transistors. Now to place those, make sure that you don't mix them up. First of all, make sure that the regulator goes in IC1 and the transistor goes in T1. Now from a bird's eye view, there is a flat side and there is a curved side. From a bird's eye view, when you place it in, make sure that the flat side, in this case of the transistor, matches the flat side of the footprint and that the rounded side matches the rounded side of the footprint. Same goes for the regulator. Now the LED, you've got some options here. The LED goes into the LED1 slot. You might notice if you look very closely, on the right there is a flat part of the uh, footprint and the left side is rounded. It's a little bit more difficult to see than say the transistor. But the flat side on the right hand side is your negative and the left hand side, the rounded side, is the positive. On the LED there is a long lead and a short lead, much like the electrolytic capacitor. The long lead is your positive, the short lead is your negative. So place your long lead in the hole to the left and your short lead in the hole on the right. However, if you want to do what I did with my uh, my flashlight, which is now fully charged, you might want to extend it using wires, which is perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. If you want to extend it using wires, extend it using wires. I decided to drill a hole in the side of my flashlight so that I could put it, uh, the LED through. So solder those three components into place. And next we'll do the DC jack and the uh, three pin terminal block. Almost done. We got our DC power jack and we got our terminal block. Now for the DC power jack, it really only fits in one way. And the holes are very big. So you don't need to make a huge solder joint around it. You just need to make sure that when you fit it in, uh, you solder each lead on the bottom to one of the sides because as I said the holes are very big. Make sure the connection is good but you don't want to apply too too much heat and add too much solder because you'll melt the five millimeter jack. So just make sure that there's a good connection to each of the sides. Only two of the three holes actually matter. The hole right here with the square shaped lead is your ground and the hole in the back here uh, is your positive. So if you don't want to use a DC jack, say you want to make long wires for your power say you want to use a terminal block of some kind you have that option but it comes with a DC jack because I designed it with a 9 volt um, 1 amp transformer in mind but that's an option you can have ground here positive DC in here this hole is just for mounting don't worry about it you don't you don't need to worry about that hole it has nothing to do with the circuitry I'd like to add that there are four mounting holes here 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 and here. The, uh, if you have the right hardware you can mount it properly. The, what, another thing I'd like to mention is the 78L05. It does get a bit warm at 9 volts I would, when the relay is on. Only when the relay is on will it get warm. I like to mount it a little bit higher off the board than the transistor. The transistor won't really get hot. Now the 78L05 won't get really hot. It won't be damaging. But I do like to mount it just a little bit higher on the board. Just a note. So let's solder that into place. You get your terminal block. Very, very easy. Make sure that the screw terminals are facing outwards. You don't want to have it facing where the relay is going to go or else you won't be able to connect anything to it. So you want to make sure that the screw terminals are facing this way. Again, make sure that your solder joints are very strong on here because that is where your uh, capacitor voltage will be feeding whatever you decide to power with this. Last step before we test. You've got a 8-pin uh, dip socket right here. There's a notch on the left-hand side. And you'll notice on the board IC2, which is labeled PIC 10F222, there is a notch on the left-hand side as well. Match the 
uh, from a bird's eye view, match the notch on the socket to the notch on the footprint. Because there's also a notch on the PIC 10F222 microchip, program microchip, that should be placed facing the left. So if you match the notch on the socket up, or match the socket to the footprint up, then it'll be easy to match the uh, the microchip to the uh, notch on the socket. Very easy to do, eight pins, just make sure not to do any shorting. Lastly, you got your revival relay, really only fits in one way. There's three pins on one side, two on the other. Again, strong solder joints. There's nice big pads, but strong, nice strong solder joints on there. Next, we'll be ready to test. All right, ladies and gents, the moment of truth. Now, because we've got no capacitors connected and nothing connected here, software will detect that there's nothing there and it will immediately shut off. So, but this is just a test sequence to see if A, the relay is working, the PIC is doing what it's supposed to, and the LED is working. So what we'll do is I'll plug it in. This should blink three, or three times, and then the relay should click on, and then it should click off, and then this, this LED will continue to blink until I power off. So let's just do a test. This is the test sequence. So LED blinks, really turns on, really turns off. LED blinks continuously until I power off. Good. It works. Happy day. Now, if it doesn't, troubleshooting. You've likely got a short somewhere, or you haven't soldered something correctly. Just look over it. You'll figure it out. That is the test. That's the, the test method before we add the uh, rest of the circuitry. Now again, I'll be selling these just in uh, in this form, in kit form for this, but I'll also sell uh, packages for uh, for a discount with uh, uh, supercapacitors, voltage booster, uh, LED bank, and uh, power supply. But anyway, let me just show you how to hook it up with a uh, an LED bank and voltage booster. First things first. There are four pins on the capacitor bank carrier labeled. This left two pins are labeled cap one, right uh, two are labeled cap two. And underneath there is a positive sign, a negative sign, another positive sign, another negative sign. So one positive and one negative for each capacitor. But what you can do is you can actually bypass the two middle pins and just connect them in series right here by connecting the negative of the first uh, capacitor to the positive of the second capacitor. Now, the, if you want to know which side is positive and which side is negative of these supercapacitors, the side with the white stripe on it is your negative. So this is our primary, this is our series connection, and this is our ground pin. So what you want to do is solder that. Uh, what you can do is you can solder positive uh, for cap 1 to cap 1 positive, negative of cap 1 to cap 1 negative, uh, positive of cap 2 to cap 2 positive, and negative of cap 2 to cap 2 negative. But again, I've just connected it in series here to save some time. So I can solder my red wire to the positive lead on cap 1, and my negative wire to the negative lead on cap 2. And that will give us our 5.4 volt 200 farad bank. Now you don't need to use these capacitors. You can use all sorts of different values. I like sticking to two, uh, putting two 400 farad capacitors in series because it gives you a fair bit of energy, enough to keep the battery, the the flashlight on for a fair bit of time. Now the flashlight will only operate down to 3.4 volts on this. So when this, when the voltage on the capacitor bank reaches uh, 3.4 volts, the uh, voltage booster will not work, but I'm going to give you some uh, some other options here. There are some other options if you don't want to use the voltage booster. But the voltage booster allows you to use the special LED bank, which is very, very bright. Anyway, so we'll solder that up, and then I'll show you how to use the outputs. Make sure you have good solder joints. Now, a good test to know that the uh, capacitors are charging. Plug it in. Relay turned on, it did not turn off. That means it's successfully charging the capacitors, and when it gets to about 5.33 volts, it will turn off and the LED will continue to flash, at which point we'll be able to access that power using this output port. Now on the output port, the terminal block, there are three pins, ground, ground, and cap plus. Ground, ground, and cap plus. Cap plus is the positive voltage on the bank, and the two grounds, I'll show you what they're for in a minute. Now, I'd like to mention, 
that this, the longer it's charging, the hotter this resistor will get. That's why we have it above the board. That's why if you mount it into a flashlight unit, you want to keep it away from plastic. You want to keep it away from just about everything. It's not going to get scalding hot, but it's going to, it's going to get hot enough to burn you and burn other things too. So this is something to consider. Your LM7805 or 78L05 will get pretty, pretty warm while the relay is on. Not nearly as hot as this. I just wanted to warn you in advance, which is why you want to mount it above the board. So let's plug in our, uh, our booster and our other circuitry. On the booster, there are three pins, and they're actually labeled underneath the board. V in on the left, ground, and V out on the right. And we can vary the output voltage using this uh, variable resistor. As long as it's got 3.4 volts on the input, it can, uh, it can boost it up to about 34 volts max. You can vary it again using the variable resistor. So we want to tune it to between 8 and 10 volts to work with our LED bank. So what we want to do is, first of all, we want to connect a switch between the cap plus pin on our booster on our charger board to the VN pin on our booster. We also want to use one of the two ground pins, doesn't matter which one, to connect to the, between the two boards uh, in the middle. Let's just say use the middle pin. The middle pin on the booster and the middle pin, on, or the middle pin on the booster and the middle pin on the charger. Lastly, we'll do the uh, we'll connect our bank, but first we have to test and calibrate the booster. Before we calibrate the booster, if you want to measure the voltage on the capacitors even while it's charging, all you have to do is take uh, set up your multimeter to measure voltage. Place your black lead on one of the two output ground leads and your red probe on the cap plus lead. So right now there's 3.26 volts on the caps, but it's not charging at the moment. You'll notice that I've got a switch between uh, cap, cap plus and the, uh, and the V in pin of my booster. I've got ground connecting the two boards. Now, before I connect my LED bank, which is, which is it will be our last step, what I'll do is I'll grab a tiny little screwdriver. I'll place my black probe on the middle pin, the ground pin, and my red probe on the output pin of the booster. Then I'll turn on the power. So it's calibrated right now to 10.03 volts. So by turning the variable resistor, I'm going to tune it to 9 volts. The LED bank will work between 8 volts and 12 volts, but you get a lot more time out of it the lower that you go. And you get a fair bit of light at 8 to 9 volts too. So I'm going to turn it off. The LED will slowly turn off. There's capacitance left in that capacitor. And now I'll connect the LED bank. Now to connect the LED bank, uh, all you have to do is connect the black wire of the LED bank to the ex to the secondary ground on the on the charger board, and the red wire to the bank to the V out pin of the booster. So let's do that, and then we'll test it. Now the output tuned to nine volts. Once it's calibrated, you might want to consider putting a little bit of glue on the head of the variable resistor so it stays calibrated. Let's turn on the power and see if it works. Awesome. So the charger board charges the. A capacitor bank to 5.4 volts, 5.3 volts roughly, at 200 farads. When you, uh, when it's done charging, the capacitors will become completely isolated from the rest of the circuit, so there's no back powering. I'll just turn this off because it's disorienting. The power stored in the caps can be accessed by that the uh, uh, terminal block, which is then boosted through this booster, uh, which is then sent through this this uh, LED bank. Now you don't have to worry about this stuff. If you don't if you don't want a booster, you what you can do is you can go to the dollar store, or Dollar Ram, or wherever you go. You can get a an LED flashlight head. It consumes very little current and modify it just with the output here. You don't need the booster. You can use a different kind of configuration. You can use Cap Plus and a switch and one of the grounds to use with a dollar store flashlight LED head. Don't use the bulbs, take too much energy. LED is the way to go. So I'll be selling this kit with just the charger board. 
Uh, I'll be selling it uh, a version with the charger board and two 400 farad super caps. And I'll be selling a version with the charger kit, two 400 farad super caps, the booster, the switch, and the LED bank. So there'll be three different listings available at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. One last thing I'd like to mention is super caps, they're charged right now. They're all they're charged to three some point something volts. I can touch them. Nothing's gonna happen to me. It's low voltage. I'm not going to be hurt by it. You don't have to worry about it. I'm touching the outputs. I'm touching it. However, if you have a direct short on these capacitors, a direct short means no resistance, or little to no resistance, and it means current is going to be huge. So if I did a direct short right now between this red wire and this black wire, what would happen is the wires would turn red and the insulation would melt off, likely set on fire. That's what you got to be careful of. Be careful of shorting. Make sure that your your uh, your terminals are tightly are tightly closed around your connections. Make sure that your connections are not visible. Like right now, there is no sh wire showing on, on my terminal blocks. Everything's tightly. Everything's done professionally. If you're going to be building this, build it professionally. I've just given you all that you need to uh, to build to build it up from, from scratch. So, uh, if you're interested, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me if you have any questions. Uh, engineeringshock.com is our website, and it'll be up in a few days. Uh, electroniclessons.com will take you to our eBay store. We've got uh, nine more kits uh, that I'm, I'm trying to get, find the time to get together for you guys. So, stay tuned. We've got a laser, uh, laser kit, a laser detection kit, sorry, continuity tester kit, ultrasonic receiver kit, uh, PR, PIR detector kit, super capacitor charger kit, and a couple more. So thanks for watching everyone.